example four and 8.3 for math 30-1 is one of those you know, word problems the students typically don't like, but it is really important because it gives us you know, the real application of how we can apply a logarithmic scale. And the formula that they give us is that the decimal reading of some sound, I'm just gonna make it X, is equal to 10 times the log of the intensity of X over a baseline intensity I naught. Think of I naught as kind of the softest sound we could ever possibly hear. And then I X is, and this is an X right here, um, is the actual intensity our eardrum is experiencing. Now that form is useful, but it's just as useful to say BX over 10 is equal to the log of I X over I naught. And then when we switch to exponential form, what I can say is that I X over I naught is equal to 10 to the power of the decibel reading of sound X divided by 10. And the reason why I say that that's so much more useful is it actually allows us to solve questions where it talks about you know, relating the intensity of two different sounds, which is what A is talking about. Um, A tells us, and I'll write out the information here, that the decibel reading of a chainsaw is equal to 85, and the decibel reading of headphones is equal to 110. And I'll put the B, that's decibels, beside each of these. And then the question tells us that how many, or asks us, how many times as intense as the sound of a chainsaw is the maximum volume setting, that 110. So it wants us to relate the intensity of our headphones to some unknown. And I'm going to make that, I don't want to make it X because I already used X. So I'm just going to make it N times the intensity of the chainsaw. Now, because we have the decibel readings, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use this formula right here. But what we're going to do is we're trying to get um, both of these intensities related to I naught. And the way that we do that is we multiply the entire equation by one over I naught. Because we're doing this on the left and the right hand side, it's perfectly valid to do. But what it manipulates our equation into is the intensity of the headphones over I naught is equal to some number times the intensity of the chainsaw over I naught. Now, what we can actually do with this is we can use our formula. I'm going to do it in two colors here. For the chainsaw, I'm going to say the intensity of the chainsaw over I naught is equal to 10 to the power of 85 divided by 10. And that's just putting in its decimal reading of 85 into this formula. We're going to do the same thing for the headphones then. So the intensity of the headphones over I naught can be written as 10 to the power of 110 divided by 10. Now, what that allows me to do is it allows me to relate these intensities using, and I know they don't look like numbers, but they are. So my headphone is going to get replaced by 10 to the power of 11, 11 being 110 divided by 10. That's going to be some number times as intense as the intensity of the chainsaw, which we identified was 10 to the power of 8.5. And maybe I'll just write that this is 8.5, and this can be simplified into 11. What I can do now to solve for n is I can divide by 10 to the power of 8.5 on both sides. I get that n is equal to 10 to the power of 11 minus 8.5 because they have the same base, which is 10 to the power of 2.5. Now, we typically don't use language like that. I don't say that, you know, somebody has 10 to the power of 2.5 times as much money as me. We would rather see what that number actually is. And when you put 10 to the power of 2.5 into your calculator, what you get, it's 316. Now, what we can say then is the intensity of our headphones on their max setting is 316 times more intense than a chainsaw. And this is why hearing damage is becoming a much more prevalent medical issue because, and I'm guilty of this too, I, I, no judgment, we all tend to like putting our headphones in and cranking the music. But it is damaging our eardrums and we have to be, you know, calling us into that. A lot of the, the newer headphones will have an actual maximum factory setting, so we can't turn them up all that much or to a damaging amount. Okay, um, B is a little bit different. It's talking about, uh, you know, what sound level is considered safe, basically. And it tells us a couple different things here. I'm going to put them in that the decibel reading for a whisper is 20 decibels, and we want the decibel reading for a safe sound, and that's an unknown. But it does tell us that the intensity of our safe sound is equal to 100,000 times the intensity of a whisper. Now, just like my previous question, I am going to divide both sides by I naught because that allows me to actually relate this to the decibel formula. And if the decibel reading of a whisper is 20, then the intensity of a whisper divided by I naught using the equation that I did in part A is going to be 10 to the power of 20 divided by 10. So that intensity of the whisper compared to the base intensity is 10 squared. It's 100 times more intense than the softest sound we could ever hear. 
Now, what this is going to allow me to do is going to allow me to solve for IS over I0. And I'm going to do one other thing here. I'm going to change 100,000 into 10 to the power 5. So the intensity of my safe sound related to I0 is going to be 10 to the power 5 multiplied by 10 to the power of 2, which is the intensity of our whisper compared to I0. So I get that the intensity of my safe sound is equal to 10 to the power of 7. Now, the intensity is important, but typically, um, you know, in several different industries, they will tell you, okay, as long as you're below this decibel, you're safe. You don't have to wear ear protection. But if you go above this decibel, then that sound is actually damaging your ears. So we wear ear protection so that there's less movement of the eardrum, causing less damage. We want to know what that decibel reading is. Well, the decibel reading of a safe sound is equal to 10 times the log of the intensity of the safe sound related to that baseline intensity. We now know the argument to that logarithm. So I'm going to say the decibel reading of my safe sound is equal to 10 times the log of 10 to the power of 7. So the decibel reading of my safe sound is 10 times 7. So that safe sound is 70 decibels. So as long as you're working in an area with less than 70 decibels of sound, you don't have to wear ear protection. Now, I don't know what the regulations are for your job, so don't try to quote me on that. I hold no weight at your job whatsoever. But it is one of those concepts that things like this form some of those regulations around industries to try to minimize how much workers get hurt. Um, this is pretty near and dear to me. My dad was an instrumentation tech and he worked for you know four decades um, and he got permanent hearing damage from not basically being told or being required to wear hearing protection. Now, certainly, you know, workers comp gives them hearing aids and stuff like that now, but, you know, understanding that safe working conditions are ultimately, you know, for the benefit of the people is a pretty important concept. And it's a little bit of a, a cross curricular concept in this section of math. I'm going to put that full assignment up. I, I will modify it on Google Classroom, but it is very important that we do a lot of questions in 8.3. We have to become very, very comfortable and confident using our log laws.